Good evening. I'd like to call this public meeting of Council of Tuesday, May the 5th, 2020 to order. Is there a disclosure of pecuniary interest or general nature thereof? None. Could I have a motion to approve the agenda? Moved by Councillor Plummer, seconded by Councillor Lafreniere. All those in favor? Carried. New business. This meeting has been called to consider the application under City of Pembroke Zoning Bylaw 2020-05 to rezone the properties municipally known as 840 Pembroke Street West from a residential 2-R2 zone to a highway commercial 37-C2-37 zone to allow and reflect actual use as a retail store, workshop and one residential apartment. Would the clerk please report how notice was of this hearing was given? Notice was given by mail to all owners of the property within a 120 meter radius of the subject land and was posted on the site on April the 8th, 2020. Is there anyone in opposition to the application? Mrs. Sorio. 
In regards to this application, um, there has been no one, um, no concerns were received about this application, no written concerns or no verbal concerns. Okay. I would ask then that for a planning report from the city planner, please. Um, just so that uh, everyone was aware, we had our planning advisory and, and committee meeting on April, sorry, on uh, May 5th, and it was a live streamed uh, version of our uh, committee of adjustment meeting. And we sent a notice to everyone that received, uh, that was in the rezoning um, file notification area. And we asked them to provide us with an email of their concerns, a uh, letter of their concern, with their concerns. We asked them to call us at City Hall, or they had the other option of calling in at uh, the PAC meeting um, during the time of 4.30 and the end of the meeting. Um, so the, this worked very well. And um, I just wanted to let you know um, that's what we did for our first virtual planning advisory and adjustment meeting. So in regards to the 840 Pembroke Street West, um, this is a rezoning as well as a severance application. So presently, um, a portion of the parking lot for the, uh, the existing kitchen and bath business at 840 Pembroke Street West is located on the next door property at 818 Pembroke Street West. Both 818 and 840 Pembroke Street West are owned by the same um, owner, but what they would like to do is just sever off a piece of land and ha have it as a lot addition to 840 so that the parking is now with the proper property at 840 Pembroke Street uh, West. And um, the zoning, is R2. So they'd like to change the zoning to Highway Commercial-37 to recognize the existing use of a kitchen and bath shop, attached workshop, warehouse, apartment dwelling unit, and parking lot. So um, like I said, there was no um, concerns from the neighbors um, and there's no addition uh, proposed. There may be a dish, sorry, there may be an addition to the front of the building, but none of the rest of the building would be touched. So any setback deficiencies have been there since the beginning of, since the, when that building was built and it, apparently it's over 70 years old. So the planning department is recommending its approval. I would ask for a comment or a report from the chair of the planning and development committee, Councillor Reavy. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, the committee had no issues with this. It's in a sense a housekeeping. It's been used as a parking space for a long time. We just want to do what's legally uh, beneficial. Thank you. Thank you. This public meeting is now adjourned. This meeting has been called to consider the application under City of Pembroke Zoning Bylaw 2020-05 to rezone the properties municipally known as 813 Pembroke Street East from a highway commercial uh, dash C2 zone to a highway commercial dash three dash C2 dash three zone to allow use as a single detached dwelling in addition to the existing highway commercial uses. Would the clerk, uh, Deputy Clerk, please advise how the notice was given? Notice was given by mail to all owners of the property within a 120 meter radius of the subject land and was posted on the site on April the 8th, 2020. Thank you. I would ask for the planning report from the city planner, please. Uh, there was no one that submitted any concerns regarding this application. And the application is for rezoning for a commercial, for the commercial establishment at 813 Pembroke Street East to permit a single detached dwelling house along with other permitted highway commercial zones. The existing building accommodated a hairdressing school, but this use ended three years ago and the building has remained vacant since then. The applicant would like to rezone the property to permit a single detached dwelling house along with other C2 uses. Uh, there would be no addition to the, uh, the building, parking and setbacks are met. The planning department is recommending the approval of this application. Councillor Reavy, any comments? Again, um, the committee was very happy with the application and we'd like to see the building being used as a residential dwelling once again. Thank you. This public meeting is now adjourned. This meeting has been called to consider the application under City of Pembroke Zoning Bylaw 2020-05 
to rezone the properties municipally known as 102 Deacon Street from a residential Type 2-R2 zone to a residential Type 4-1-R4-1 zone to accommodate an existing five-unit apartment building with relief granted from minimum lot frontage, minimum rear yard setback, minimum interior side yard setback, minimum dwelling unit area, privacy yard, yards and buffer strip requirements. Clerk, Deputy Clerk, please report how notice was given. The notice was given by mail to all owners of the property within a 120 meter radius of the subject land and was posted on the site on April the 8th, 2020. Would the city planner please provide us with a report? So an application for rezoning for 102 uh, Deacon Street was received. Presently it's R2 and uh, there is an existing five unit apartment building on the property. It has existed in that state for over 30 years. Uh, the official plan designates it as residential and uh, the applicant is proposing to sell the property and thus is the need to, um, it's been brought to light and thus the need to rezone. There's no addition proposed to the building um, and uh, the, the deficiencies have existed since the building was built and so the planning department is recommending its approval. The parking requirements can be met. However, we did receive an email um, and, and a call during the planning advisory committee meeting um, about it from a neighbor expressing concerns over the rezoning. Their main concern was garbage. The applicant agreed to construct a garbage uh, enclosure and this condition would form part of the zoning bylaw amendment if approved by council. The neighbor was satisfied that a garbage closure with a garbage enclosure being built. Thank you, Councillor Reavy. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, yes, committee did um, did discuss and consider the letter, the email we received, and um, we think that uh, we wanted to see this move forward. There's no change to the property. It's always been a five unit apartment for 30 plus years. So um, hopefully everybody will be happy once that uh, the garbage enclosure is, uh, is built. Thank you. Thank you. This public meeting is now adjourned. This meeting has been called to consider the application under the City of Pembroke Official Plan 2016 to redesignate the properties municipally known as 1064 Pembroke Street West from a highway commercial designation to a residential designation and further under the City of Pembroke Zoning Bylaw 2020-05 to rezone said properties from a highway commercial 16-C2-16 zone to residential type 2R2 zone to allow use as a semi-detached dwelling. Deputy Clerk, how was the notice of hearing given? The notice was given by mail to all owners of the property within a 120 meter radius of the subject land and was posted on the site on April the 8th, 2020. Thank you. Will the city planner please give us a report? Uh, no concerns were received regarding this application. So the application, the applicant would like to rezone and redesignate the official plan to allow for a semi-detached dwelling house. The actual building was built um, as a semi-detached and then converted to an office building and now they would like to reconvert it back to a semi-detached dwelling house. It's um, surrounded by residential uses. There would be no commercial use anymore at 1064 Pembroke Street West. It would meet the official plan if, uh, if redesignated, and uh, the planning department is recommending its approval. Councillor Reavy. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, the committee had no issues with this, just reverting back to the original use of the property. Thank you. Thank you. This public meeting is now adjourned. This meeting has been called to consider the application under City of Pembroke Zoning Bylaw 2020-05 to rezone the properties municipally known as 304 Mackenzie Street from a residential type 2-30-R2-30 zone to a residential type 2-14-R2-14 zone to allow a semi-detached dwelling with relief granted from minimum lot area, minimum lot death, minimum front yard setback, minimum rear yard setback, and parking area location on lot requirements. Deputy Clerk, how was the notice given? 
Notice was given by mail to all owners of the property within a 120 meter radius of the subject land and was posted on the site on April the 8th, 2020. Thank you. City Planner, could you give us a report, please? No concerns uh, from the public were raised about this application. So the proposed rezoning uh, would allow the vacant property to um, construct, to be allowed to construct a semi-detached dwelling house with reduced uh, setbacks. However, in this area of the city, there is a lot of properties within this uh, notification area that has reduced lot areas and reduced lot frontages. So the proposed semi-detached, even though it does have reduced area and lot frontage would be compatible with the neighborhood and the planning department is recommending its approval. Thank you. Councillor Reby. Thank you, Your Worship. Again, no, uh, no issues with committee. These um, semi-detached are very desirable in our city, so it's a, it, it is a good bill. Thank you. That completes our public meetings. Could I have a motion to adjourn, please? Moved by Councillor Lafreniere, seconded by Councillor Plummer. All those in favour? Carried. This meeting is now adjourned. I'd like to call this combined meeting of Tuesday, May the 5th, 2020 to order, please. Any disclosure of pecuniary interest in general nature thereof? Councillor Abdallah. Yes, Your Worship, I'll be declaring a, a conflict on item uh, 5B under new business, Festival Hall Management Agreement. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Lafreniere, you have your hand up. Do you have a, Councillor Lafreniere? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Abdalla. Uh, can I have approval of the meeting agenda, please? Moved by Councillor Plummer, seconded by Councillor Jackano. All those in favor? Carried, thank you. Approval of our minutes held on April the 21st, 2020. Moved by Councillor Reeby, seconded by Councillor Abdalla. All those in favor? Carried. New business, the property tax and water sewer due dates. Would our treasurer, Mrs. Lochte, please provide us with the report. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, tonight I have a follow-up report on property tax and water and sewer due dates for the balance of 2020. In response to the COVID-19 pandemic, Committee and Council approved the extension of the first installment of the 2020 interim tax bill uh, from March 31st 2020 to May 29th, as well as the second quarter water sewer billing from April 29th to May 29th. The due date for the second installment of the 2020 interim tax bill was unchanged at May 29th, pending further information on the duration of the pandemic and uh, other levels of government's response to it. Uh, since that point in time, uh, both federal and provincial governments have implemented a number of income stability measures from income and payroll tax payment deferrals, emergency benefits, wage subsidies and rent relief. Uh, and across Ontario, many municipalities are continuing to offer due date deferrals in light of the continued economic uncertainties created by the pandemic. Uh, but specific approaches vary widely across uh, the province of Ontario. Over the past month, the city has received uh, lots of feedback from our local rate players, <clears throat> which has included uh, a number of property owners have been requesting 
uh, relief from the second interim tax installment due date uh, on May 29th. Um, as well, the city has also received feedback related to the difficulties created by having multiple payments due uh, to the city at the same time, uh, given people's uh, current situations. Uh, other considerations in reviewing the city's upcoming due dates include uh, the need to balance work workload between payment due dates and the generation of final tax bills in July, um, as well as providing clear information to residents regarding future due dates for planning purposes. Uh, it is important to note that while the province of Ontario has delayed the city's obligation to pay the June 30th education taxes, which works out to be roughly $1 million due per quarter uh, to our local school, school boards, um, to September 30th and the September 30th payment to December 15th. Uh, the municipality itself does not qualify for most of the relief programs currently offered by provincial and federal governments. Uh, funding generated from city property taxes, water and sewer bills covers the city's current year costs to not only pay city employees, but also provide essential services to residents like roads, fire protection, paramedics, the local health unit, and policing. Um, all services that are more important than ever in the situation we face right now. According to the legislation governing Ontario municipalities, any deficit incurred in the current year uh, by the municipality must be included and funded through the following year's budget. In light of all of these considerations, uh, the following due dates are proposed for the balance of 2020. So we are proposing to move the 2020 um, second installment of interim property taxes from the 29th of May to the 30th of June. To move the third quarter water sewer bill typically due mid-July to mid-August. To move the first installment of the final property tax bill from the end of August to the end of September. Uh, to keep the Q4 water tax, uh, the water sewer bill, uh, due in October, and then the final property tax bill, uh, second installment, uh, moved from the 30th of October to the 30th of November. So this schedule will ensure that payments are spread across all the remaining months of the year. Um, so we won't have two things due at the same time. Uh, but in total, everything will be collected by December 15th. So that's the date when the city must remit the balance of 2020 education taxes to the school boards. Uh, extending the second installment of the interim tax bill from the end of May to the end of July was considered, but this would create workload issues with the generation of the final property tax bill. Uh, and residents would still be encouraged in our communications to pay their property taxes according to the original or normal due date if they are able to. In terms of the financial implication of this proposal, uh, deferring the property tax, water and sewer due dates is expected to reduce interest revenue um, in terms of property taxes by about $10,500 per month and for water and sewer, about $5,000 per month. Thank you. Thank you. Any comments? Councillor Plummer. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, the only question I have uh, to the uh, um, <clears throat> finance is when we're talking about the financial impact, I certainly uh, like, first of all, my comment of I like the schedule. I think it's appropriate. It has everything spread out nicely. There's no double payments being hit with water and sewer as well as taxes on the same uh, time, which is great. I'm just wondering a clarification on the $10,500 per month loss to, to um, revenue as far as interest. In, is that per month of extension or is that every month that we're late? Um, just a little clarification. I'm not as if you add up all the months that, that we're losing because if we're extended one month or just like that's one month so we're basically losing only 10,500. Uh, through the chair, so that's every time we defer it by one month, uh, it would be roughly uh, based on our experience with the, the delay of the March 31st due date, uh, 10,500 per month. So as we see, we're removing a number of them a month, it would be each time. Uh, I am putting together uh, a detailed analysis of potential financial impacts across the city and uh, working with the management team on possible uh, ways to, to mediate uh, those impacts. So that will be coming to council in an upcoming meeting. Okay, thank you.
Plummer. Uh, thank you for your clarification. Just a follow up then. Uh, uh, so I would move that we ap approve the recommendation by the fin finance department and uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks. Thank you, Council Plummer. Deputy Mayor. Uh, thank you, Worship, and uh, thank you, Madam Treasurer, for the, uh, the the report. I echo what uh, Councillor Plummer is indicating. Um, I, I recognize that the uh, part one, I guess, when we were dealing with this, uh, was uh, was sudden, if I can put it that way, and uh, it was going to result in doubling up. So I'm glad to see that we've corrected that and spaced out over the whole year, and that the ratepayers know what to expect over the course of uh, uh, of this year in terms of uh, extensions and so forth, so that people can plan and. Uh, just equally as important, the municipality compliant. Are you seconding the motion, Deputy Mayor? I would. Okay, thank you. Second by uh, the Deputy Mayor. Any other comments? I think one thing that, that's important for us as well is that AMO, or the Associated Municipalities of Ontario, has already uh, made a request, I think, to the government in regards to relief for municipalities because as the treasurer mentioned, there's nothing at, at this particular stage, but all the municipalities, like all businesses, are beginning to suffer financially. Are there any other comments? Okay, could I move the motion? i uh, moved by Councillor Plummer, seconded by the Deputy Mayor. All those in favor? Carried, thank you. B, Festival Hall Management Agreement. Terry, CEO. Yes, yes, thank you. Uh, staff recommends that committee approve the award for the management services of Festival Hall to Aventure Entertainment, which is operated by Mr. Rick Wharton, who is the current manager of the facility for a term of five years plus one uh, potential extension by mutual consent. So with respect to background, a request for proposal for the management services of Festival Hall was publicly advertised and closed on April 1st, 2020, with the proposal submitted by Adventure Entertainment being assessed as complete and compliant. So the there is a consortium of the City of Pembroke, the Town of Petawawa, and the Township of Laurentian Valley, which jointly oversees the operation of Festival Hall. So each partner contributes $1.25 per capita, and the current contribution from the consortium is just under $42,000 uh, with the city of Pembroke's portion being $13,000. So I should also point out that there is a bylaw which has to be prepared and will be brought before council this evening. That is my report. Thank you, Councillor Reedy. Thank you, Worship. Um, yeah, very happy with Rick's work over the, the past few years um, the festival hall is doing well and hopefully things will get up and running there once we uh, get past the pandemic. Um, Rick's, uh, Rick's excited to get moving um, again. It's a good value, the dollar 25 per, uh, per capita, good value. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Thank you. Could I have a motion to adjourn our, pub, our combined meeting, please? Moved by Councillor Reeve, seconded by Councillor Jackano. All those in favor? This meeting is now adjourned. Thank you. Yeah. yeah.
I'd like to call this council meeting of Tuesday, May 5th, 2020 to order. Could you please stand for a short reflection? Thank you. Is there any disclosure of pecuniary interest or general nature thereof? Uh, Councilor Abdallah. Yes, Your Worship, I'll be declaring a conflict of interest on item 5G, special law management agreement. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Mayor? No? Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Just simply to indicate that uh, I know you're going to deal with it as number 10 closed session, but being the earliest opportunity to uh, raise that I had a conflict and that uh, I know you'll mention it underneath that section, but I just wanted to declare it keeping with the procedural bylaw. Thank you very much. Uh, approval of our minutes from our council meeting held on April the 21st, 2020. Moved by Councillor Plummer, seconded by Councillor Reeve. All those in favor? Carried. Adopt the minutes from our committee combined committee meeting held on April the 21st, 2020. Moved by Councillor Lafreniere, seconded by Councillor Jack Cano. All those in favor? Carried. Bylaws 2020 Land License Agreement. Councillor Jack Cano. Councillor Jackano, put your microphone on, please. Apologize. Uh, moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Plummer, that bylaw 2020-20 being a bylaw to authorize the entering into a land license agreement between the Corporation of the City of Pembroke and Her Majesty the Queen and Right of Canada, as represented by the Ministry of the Environment, be adapted and passed and further that the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and clerk and sealed uh, with the seal of the corporation waiting your signature, your worship. Moved by Councillor Jackano, seconded by Councillor Plummer, that bylaw 2020-20, a bylaw to authorize the entering into a land license agreement between the corporation of the city of Pembroke and Her Majesty the Queen in right of Canada as represented by the Minister of the Environment be adopted and passed. And further, that the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Any comments? Council Jack? Your Worship, uh, uh, your worship uh, these contracts from time to time uh, have to be renewed. And they were discussed earlier at the uh, previous meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Bylaw 2020-27 dedicated gas, uh, gas tax fund. Deputy Mayor. Uh, thank you, Worship. I just don't know again uh, in terms of bylaw 2020 uh, dash 20 if you called the question on that one. Sorry, no, I didn't. So we'll go back to bylaw 2020, moved by Councillor Jack and a second by Councillor Plummer. All those in favor? Okay, carried. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Okay, thank you, Worship. Uh, Bylaw 2020-27, uh, moved by myself, second by Councillor Abdallah, that bylaw 2020-27, a bylaw to authorize an agreement with the Minister of Transportation on behalf of the City of Pembroke and the Township of Laurentian Valley for dedicated gas tax funds be adopted and passed, and further that the said bylaw be signed by the Mayor and Clerk and sealed with the seal of the Corporation. Moved by Deputy Mayor Gervais, seconded by Councillor Abdallah, that bylaw 2020-27, a bylaw to authorize an agreement with the Minister of Transportation on behalf of the City of Pembroke and the Township of Laurentian Valley for dedicated gas tax funds be adopted and passed, and further that the said bylaw be signed by the Mayor and Clerk and sealed with the seal of corporation. Comments, Deputy Mayor? Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Simply to indicate that this is uh, to allow the gas tax funds to flow in respect to uh, transportation for the City of Pembroke, uh, which is uh, then provided to the uh, Pembroke Candy Bus. Uh, it's done on an annual basis, and although late this year, it's, uh, it's glad to see that it has come through. Thank you. 
All those in favor? Carried. Uh, bylaw 2020-28 to amend bylaw 2020-05. Councillor Reeby. Thank you, Your Worship. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Lafreniere, that bylaw 2020-28, a bylaw to authorize the amendment of zoning bylaw 2020-05 regarding 840 Pembroke Street West be adopted and passed, and further that the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Moved by Lafreniere. Okay. Moved by Councillor Reeby, seconded by Councillor Lafreniere, that bylaw 2020-28, a bylaw to authorize the amendment of zoning bylaw 2020-05 regarding 840 Pembroke Street West be adopted and passed. And further, that the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and clerk and sealed with the corporation. Any comments, Councillor Reeby? This was discussed previously at the uh, public meeting. Thank you. All those in favor? Carried. Bylaw 2020-29, amend bylaw 2020-05. Councillor Lafreniere. Yes, I apologize on my document. I forgot to write down who's the seconder for this. <laughs> so moved by myself, seconded by- Councillor Jacknell. You have the doc Sorry, I thought it was Councillor Jacknell, that bylaw 2020- Five regarding 813 Pembroke Street East be adopted and passed, and further that the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Moved by Councillor Lafreniere, seconded by Councillor Jackano, that bylaw 2020 29, a bylaw to authorize the amendment of zoning bylaw 2020 05 regarding 813 Pembroke Street East be adopted and passed. And further, that the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Uh, this was covered at uh, one of the public meetings earlier. This is a commercial, I believe it was a hairdressing school, and they wish to revert back to residential. Thank you. Thank you. All those in favor? Carried. Bylaw 20. Uh, 2020-30, Councillor Plummer. Thank you, Worship. Moved by myself, second by Councillor Reevee, that bylaw 2020-30, a bylaw to authorize the amendment of zoning bylaw 2020-05 regarding 102 Deacon Street be adopted and passed, and further said bylaw be signed by the mayor and clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Moved by Councillor Plummer, seconded by Councillor Reevy, that bylaw 2020-30, a bylaw to authorize the amendment of zoning bylaw 2020-05 regarding 102 Deacon Street be adopted and passed, and further that the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Any comments? No comments, Your Worship. This was discussed earlier meeting. Thank you. All those in favor? Carried. Bylaw 2020-31, uh, Councillor Reeby. Thank you, Your Worship. Moved by myself, seconded by Deputy Mayor Gervais. That bylaw 2020-31, a bylaw to authorize the amendment of the official plan 2016 of the City of Pembroke regarding 1064 Pembroke Street West be adopted and passed and further that the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Moved by Councillor Reeve, seconded by Deputy Mayor Gervais, that bylaw 2020-31, a bylaw to authorize the amendment of the official plan 2016 of the City of Pembroke regarding 1064 Pembroke Street West be adopted and passed, and further that the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and clerk and sealed with the seal of corporation. Any comments? No comments, Your Worship. This was the Blair Jones Law Office uh, conversion back to residential. Thank you. All those in favor? Carried. Uh, bylaw 2020 32, Councillor Jackano. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Abdallah that bylaw 2020 32, being a bylaw to authorize the amendment of zoning bylaw. 2020-05 regarding 1064 Pembroke Street West be adopted and passed and further 
that the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation and awaiting your signature, your worship. Moved by Councillor Giacono, seconded by Councillor Abdallah, that bylaw 2020-32, a bylaw to authorize the amendment of zoning bylaw 2020-05 regarding 1064 Pembroke Street West be adopted and passed. And further that the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and clerk and sealed to seal the corporation. Any comments? Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I do, uh, from time to time, uh, zoning, uh, zoning uh, requirements can change. Public meetings are heard. The public has the uh, expressed interest to, uh, to either say they're in approval of it or against it. And it, it's brought forward to us for final approval. Uh, sometimes commercial entities uh, uh, do not uh, meet the requirement and they can go back to uh, residential. Again, uh, there is a process and we follow that. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you. All those in favor? Okay, carried. Uh, bylaw 2020-33, Councillor Abdallah. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Pat Lafreniere, that bylaw 2020-33, a bylaw to authorize the amendment of zoning bylaw 2020-05 regarding 304 Mackenzie Street be adopted and passed, and further that the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Moved by Councillor Abdallah, seconded by Councillor Lafreniere, that bylaw 2020-33, a bylaw to authorize the amendment of zoning bylaw 2020-05 regarding 304 Mackenzie be adopted and passed. And further, that the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Any comments, Councillor Abdallah? No, Your Worship. This was brought up at the uh, public meeting held earlier tonight. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. All those in favor? Carried. Bylaw 2020-34, Councillor Plummer. Thank you, Worship. Moved by myself, second by Councillor Jackano that bylaw 2020-34, a bylaw to amend bylaw 202, being that a bylaw to provide for the interim tax levy of the year 2020 be adopted and passed, and further the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Moved by Councillor Plummer, seconded by Councillor Jackano, that bylaw 2020-34, a bylaw to amend bylaw 2020-02, being a bylaw to provide for an interim tax levy for the year 2020 be adopted and passed. And further, the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and clerk and sealed with the seal of corporation. Any comments, Councillor? Uh, only that this is uh, this was discussed earlier and in our combined meeting. Thank you. All those in favor? Carried. Bylaw 2020-35, uh, Councillor Reedy. Thank you, Your Worship. Moved by myself, seconded by Deputy Mayor Gervais. That bylaw 2020-35 a bylaw to authorize the entering into of an agreement between the Consortium of the Municipal Councils of the City of Pembroke, the Township of Laurentian Valley, and the Town of Petawawa, the Consortium, and Eventure Entertainment to provide management services for the operation of the Festival Hall be adopted and passed. And further, that the said bylaw be signed by the Mayor and Clerk and sealed with the seal of the Corporation. Councillor Reeby, seconded by Deputy Mayor Gervais, that bylaw 2020-35, a bylaw to authorize the entering into an agreement between the Consortium of the Municipal Councils of the City of Pembroke, the Township of Laurentian Valley, and the Town of Petawawa, the Consortium, and Aventure Entertainment to provide management services for the operation of Festival Hall be adopted and passed. And further, that said bylaw be signed by the Mayor and Clerk and sealed with the seal of the Corporation. Any comments? was discussed earlier again it's um another five years with rick at the helm and uh good news for all thank you very much all those in favor carried resolution 012 water and sewer Councilor lafreniere Moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Andrew Plummer, whereas the province of Ontario enacted a declaration of emergency under us under 7.0.1, the Emergency Management and Civil Protection Act on March 17th, 2020, in response to the COVID-19 pandemic, 
And whereas council wishes to provide temporary relief to ratepayers rate payers during this period of economic uncertainty, while still supporting the ongoing operations of the city, which continues to deliver critical services to residents and property owners, be it resolved that the corporation of the city of Pembroke provides staff direction to extend the third quarter Q3 2020 water and sewer billing for flat and metered properties from July 15th, 2020 to August 17th, 2020. Moved by Councillor Lafreniere, seconded by Councillor Plummer. Whereas the province of Ontario enacted a declaration of emergency under 7.0.01 the Emergency Management and Civil Protection Act on March the 17th, 2020, in response to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, and whereas Council wishes to provide temporary relief to ratepayers during this period of economic uncertainty, while still supporting the ongoing operations of the city, which continues to deliver critical services to residents and property owners, be it resolved that the Corporation of the City of Pembroke provides staff direction to extend the third quarter 2020 water and sewer billing for flat and metered properties from July the 15th, 2020 to August 17th, 2020. Any comments? No comments. All those in favor? Carried. Resolution 13, Deputy Mayor. Thank you, uh, Your Worship. Moved by myself, second by Councillor Giacono. Whereas the provincial government underneath the Emergency Management and Civil Protection Act has the ability to declare an emergency in light of serious issues arising in the province of Ontario and take corresponding action for the health and safety of residents. And whereas the provincial government has rightly declared an emergency given the dire and potential disastrous situation of the novel cor uh, coronavirus COVID-19, a declaration that will be in effect until at least May 12, 2020, at which time it would be reassessed. And whereas the provincial government is able to deem certain services essential under the same legislation in order to ensure their continued, though maybe modified, opening and operation during an emergency and most other non-essential services stay curtailed or closed. And whereas essential services are the foundation for Ontario's way of life, social, uh, socially and economically, such as grocery stores, pharmacies, public transport, uh, transit, major infrastructure development, and many healthcare facilities. And whereas provincial orders are based on current exper experiences in large urban centers, which may not reflect the health risks and realities of a smaller municipality, such as the city of Pembroke, which could benefit from more local flexibility to allow for more activities and businesses. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the city of Pembroke send a resolution to the Ontario provincial government that it is the city City's Council's belief that the local flexibility to the provincial orders to COVID-19 be considered in order to properly address the local needs and reopen some activities and reopen businesses in the City of Pembroke. And further be it resolved that a copy of the resolution be forwarded to Premier Doug Ford, the Honourable Christine Elliott, Minister of Health, MPP John Yakubuski, the Association of Municipalities of Ontario, Renfrew County and District Health Unit, County of Renfrew and Renfrew County Municipalities. Seconded by Councillor Giacono. Be it resolved that Council of the City of Pembroke send a resolution to the Ontario Provincial Government that it is the City's Council's belief that the local flexibility to provincial orders COVID-19 be considered in order to properly address local needs and reopen some activities and reopen businesses in the City of Pembroke. And be it resolved that a copy of this resolution be forwarded to Premier Doug Ford, the Honourable Christine Elliott, Minister of Health, MPP John Yakubuski, Association of Municipalities of Ontario, the Renfrew County and District Health Unit, and the County of Renfrew and Renfrew County Municipalities. Deputy Mayor, comments? Uh, thank you, Your Worship, uh, for allowing me to speak to this motion, having brought forward a notice of motion last month on this topic. I'd like to begin by thanking the frontline workers and first responders for their commitment to date and, and in the future. I'd especially like to thank the ratepayers of the City of Pembroke for their commitment and following directives by the province and for doing their part to flatten the curve and allow the province to get a handle on COVID-19. Like everything we do as a council, I understand that there's competing interests that we must take into consideration when addressing the needs of the ratepayers in our jurisdiction. 
I'm not insensitive to the concerns of many ratepayers who are concerned about their physical safety. Like most ratepayers, I've been watching the news and following what has been happening regarding COVID-19. Part of my efforts to keep informed has been to watch the information that is disseminated from the local health unit. I've been speaking with other ratepayers about the effect of COVID-19 and the effect that this particular piece of legislation and its regulations are having on their businesses as well as their lives. I've witnessed businesses permanently closing in our city and other business owners struggling despite the government financial incentives that they have been uh, putting out. Um, I'm sure that all of you councillors must see this as well. I'm um, aware that some municipalities are more heavily affected by COVID-19 with larger numbers of infected people, while other municipalities like Renfrew County in particular, our focus, that, that is to say the city of Pembroke, are not so negatively affected by COVID-19. And yet we are disproportionately affected by the government regulations that are uniformly applied to all of the province. As I stated in the beginning, I made this motion back in April when it did not appear that there was gonna be any movement by the provincial government. In recent days, uh, I've noticed that the province has been setting forward a plan to have stages to move forward in some respects, but in some cases, it's rather vague. Uh, the province has now uh, stated that they have a series of guidelines that they will implement so that when the time is right, we ought to be ready and comply with those guidelines. I understand that those guidelines include things such as, by example, that grocery stores will not be allowed to permit reusable, reusable bags. The province is indicating that we ought to be ready on a number of fronts, but again, is waiting for the right time. I uh, understand the Premier uh, indicates from time and time again that he's looking for statistical information, and that's when uh, that they will uh, react. Uh, other areas in the province are now moving. Um, the movement does not take into consideration, however, the different areas of the province, such as our city. I believe that the Premier is listening to uh, all ratepayers and to listening to municipalities. In fact, this morning on uh, CTV News, he indicated that uh, he was going to participate in a Zoom meeting with mayors from the Muskoka region about reopening that area and what it would look like. That area too is unique and that area relies upon approximately four months a year when the cottager, uh, cottage owners come to that area and spend their money in that local economy. This is where our council comes into play in terms of our ratepayers in Pembroke. I understand that other municipalities are now passing resolutions similar to the one we have this evening. As an example, the city of Kingston uh, is, is one of those. It's my position that the province ought to grant more flexibility to the provincial COVID orders, looking at each municipality on a case-by-case -case basis. I understand that the province is resistant to this and wants the entire province to move forward uni uniformly uh, and that uh, once every municipality is able to move forward in a specific area, then and only then the province will move forward in that specific sector. I truly support and I would ask my, my fellow council support a more local flexible approach. With a res such a resolution, the province might reconsider its approach to see what value there is in a more flexible approach. I'm aware today that there are 17 cases in Renfrew County with 12 being resolved and that there was one individual that passed. There are statistics for, these are statistics for all of Renfrew County, just, and does not necessarily reflect what is taking place in the city of Pembroke. Like the city of Kingston, it is my understanding that our health unit supports this particular motion. And when you ask your worship for other councillors to speak, I would hope that Councillor Reavy speaks in respect to uh, uh, the health unit's perspective as she is our representative to that health unit. It makes sense to me that a more flexible approach uh, be uh, looked at to uh, loosen the provincial directives uh, here in the city of Pembroke. There would still need to be commitment on the part of the ratepayers, including businesses to comply with the guidelines, that their province would impose such as social distancing, not using reusable uh, bags and, and the like. However, a more flexible approach would enable the city to move forward in a cautious manner, but allow additional businesses and services to reopen at a pace that's much more flexible than that as the province as a whole. I give you an example. When you travel in our downtown and you look at a business such as Town and Country or Picket Fence, these are businesses that are crucial to the city economy. The, these are businesses that could uh, open to the public with guidelines such as allowing only a certain number in the store. Make no mistake, these are not businesses that are like the Walmarts of the world where there's a ton of people in, in the building at, at one time and that the province has to implement guidelines to regulate how many go in. 
these are businesses that at best there might be two people in there at a time. And it's not to say that the province can't implement guidelines, but at least allow businesses like this, like Picket Fence, Town and Country, and I'm just picking on two of them, but there are a number of them in our downtown that are that are really suffering. When I travel in the downtown, I see businesses permanent, uh, uh, permanently closing, not just temporarily because of this. So having said all of that, it's, it's my hope that council will support the particular motion to the province to move forward in a progressive, flexible, local manner uh, without removing the province's ability to implement guidelines that are needed to keep ratepayers safe. I, I think this is a much more balanced approach and so I appreciate uh, uh, council's indulgence in listening to me go on and on about this particular point, but I, I really do believe that if enough municipalities was to say we are unique, um, uh, give us some flexibility, we'll still comply with whatever guidelines that perhaps our businesses uh, will, will be able to uh, um, weather this much better than what's happening now. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Uh, Councillor Reavy. Thank you, Your Worship, and thank you, De thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, I'm going to support the resolution. As you know, um, I have uh, had discussion with Dr. Cushman uh, regarding this approach, and um, he believes that that we're managing very well in the county. We're clearly not Toronto with with mass populations stacked on top of each other everywhere you go. And, and really, we are abiding by the, uh, the guidelines. Um, so again, Dr. Cushman uh, says, yes, the resolution is fair, and, um, but just proceed with caution, but we all understand that. Uh, so again, yes, thank you. I will support that resolution. Thank you. Council Lafreniere. Um, I too will be supporting the resolution and as part of my councillor update today, I actually, uh, tonight, I was actually going to be commenting on something um, that I think the city should be looking at along with the BIA and possibly other businesses in the uh, city uh, for that time that we can gradually return to normalcy in the city. Um, I was watching some programming the other, uh, the other night where some municipalities because of the new requirements, they're loosening up, okay, but the requirements for some restaurants is distancing. So what those municipalities have done is they've restricted traffic in certain uh, areas in their downtown so that restaurants can have enough customers. Um, so what they're doing is they're allowing no traffic so that they can set up part of their cafes or their tables in a more spacious manner in order to comply with the new regulations. So I want council to consider that or, or possibly working with the BIA to say, what would that look like in the city of Pembroke if the distancing require, requirements are going to limit a business's livelihood, what can we do as a municipality to ensure that they can comply to these distancings like closing off certain streets? Uh, so I just wanted to throw that out there. I think it is something that we should be doing today uh, is looking forward and saying, uh, how can we work with these businesses? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Abdallah. Thank you, Your Worship. So I'll be supporting the motion or the resolution as long as the uh, Renfrew County Health Unit supports it. I support it. And uh, anything we can do to help out the businesses, as uh, Deputy Mayor has said, is very important. And as the Deputy Mayor alluded to, the province is already starting to, to come out with policy and regulations for gradual reopening of businesses. Thank you, Your Worship. Councillor Jackano. Thank you, Your Worship. I'll be supporting the resolution as well. Uh, across the country, we're seeing some dramatic uh, closures of uh, food businesses. People have been in business for many, many years who will not just be able to cope and come back to the way things were. It's going to be a different world. Uh, again, we have to look at safety within the community. I, but I think, uh, as was stated earlier, I mean, we're a different demographic. We're not stacked one on top of the other, but we have to, uh, you know, we have to follow, uh, of course, health, health procedures. But there are many food businesses will just not recover. If you look at the, the national news in Montreal and Ottawa and Toronto, they're just not coming back. They're bankrupt. It's just impossible. So, uh, I mean, you have to make a move uh, sooner or later. Uh, but we have to do it with due diligence for the safety of our, our uh, you know, our population. 
uh, and based on some common sense too and distancing. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I'll call the motion on resolution 13. All those in favor? Carried unanimously. Thank you. Mayor's report, as we begin a new month, it is encouraging to see that the province of Ontario has announced a three-phase plan that will provide a framework for reopening Ontario. Phase one of this plan begins this week with the opening of seasonal businesses and some essential construction projects that are following strict public health measures. Although this development is welcome news, it is critical to remember that we are not out of the woods yet. Social distancing and effective hand washing are still the most effective tools we have in preventing the spread of COVID-19 on the road to recovery. I would once again like to thank our local businesses for the tremendous sacrifices they are making in the best interests of our community. Small businesses are the backbone of Pembroke and supporting our local businesses will be the cornerstone of a full and successful e economic recovery. I would also like to thank all the essential workers on the front lines of our community for their tremendous efforts and commitment to keeping the city of Pembroke safe and functioning during these very challenging times. The road to recovery won't be easy, but it will be possible if we continue to work together. Take care everyone and be well. Notices of motion. None, councillor updates. Councillor Reeve. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, just a little information regarding uh, Renfrew County and District Health Unit. Um, definitely on the front lines of this. Uh, so everything is still updated continually on the website, on Facebook, on Twitter. Uh, currently, and we did get one more confirmed case today, bringing us to 17. Uh, the resolved cases are 12 and still only the one death. Um, we've now completed 1,866 tests, and out of that is 1,749 were negative. There are still 100 waiting uh, for their results. So a little bit about the, the test results, because that uh, came up as a question. Um, so the, the testing is, uh, there was a call to expand the testing. So the province um, has now significantly increased the testing and contact tracing capacity. That's important in the public health world. Um, so it's allowing the health experts to identify cases of COVID-19 and support efforts to stop the spread of the virus in the community. Um, so we went to our uh, medical officer of health, Dr. Rob Cushman, say, you know, where are we at as far as testing? It seems that we might not be getting results back as quickly. Um, he did comment that the turnaround times here in uh, in the county have improved remarkably and uh, the lab capacity has expanded but you also have to um, remember that the the request for testing has expanded as well so everything is um, is we're doing well um, no significant backlogs and getting stories back of 24 hour turnaround time. So that's good. Uh, as far as staff at the health, uh, health unit fielding their um, inquiries since March 18th to date, uh, we're up to 3,257 calls. So that's a lot of, uh, of telephone time for staff and, um, Everybody's doing a great job, so I applaud them. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, a uh, item from the Operations Department, um, just uh, in respect to large item collection, to let you know that staff have been working with the waste collection contractor, the Ottawa Valley Waste Recovery Center, as well as municipal partners uh, through this pandemic. Uh, we can confirm that large item collection is going to occur on the week of May 25th. Uh, Ratepayers are asked not to place items uh, on a curbside before Sunday, May 24th. Some years that's an issue. Um, as well, uh, 
ratepayers are encouraged to not approach collection staff in order to respect physical distancing. We all know that uh, scavenging in materials is not permitted pursuant to our municipal bylaws, but this is a reminder on that front. Uh, in terms of scrap metal and non-freon metal appliances, freon appliances, electronic waste and acceptable large items, they must be all put in separate piles. Uh, construction material, small items, material in cardboard boxes or bagged garbage will not be collected as part of the large item pickup. Uh, and if anyone's looking for details, they can go to the uh, ovwrc.com. Thank you. Councillor Abdallah. Thank you, Your Worship. Just to follow up to the announcement I made at the last meeting and in connection with the PBA and uh, takeout businesses downtown and in Pembroke, uh, tomorrow is uh, and the uh, weekly takeout day across Canada. And we encourage uh, people in our community to support the local eateries and restaurants. And because um, we all know they provide a lot of uh, free stuff to charities for fundraising. So once again, the hashtag is takeout day and that's every Wednesday. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Abdallah. A closed session of council was held earlier this evening to discuss a position, plan, procedure, criteria, or instruction to be applied to any negotiations carried on or to be carried on by or on behalf of the municipality and the security of the property of the municipality. Pecunior interest was declared by the Deputy Mayor, Gervais, and there is no statement resulting from our closed session. Uh, the confirming bylaw, Councillor Abdalla. Thank you, Your Worship. Moved by myself. Your Worship, uh, point of order, if I may. Yes, Councillor Giacono. Uh, yes, if I may, uh, it's not a report, but it's a question. Have we removed the Lord's Prayer from our opening ceremony of council? Uh, we have for the this particular aspect of it, the fact that we're on Zoom. It has not been removed for any other reason. If council would like to, we, could, we can put it right back in. The only reason was because we're doing this uh, through Zoom. Go ahead. Okay, my, uh, my, my only uh, comment on that, I mean, uh, you know, we, we're living in an era, uh, in an era today where people are reaching out for uh, some some uh, solace and sustenance during these tough times with, uh, you know, so many lives being taken. And I think it's even so much more important. And it's not that we're, we're promoting any particular religion. I mean, we're promoting those words within the Lord Prayer, uh, provoke, you know, promote uh, Jehovah. They promote Jesus. They promote Buddha. They promote Confucius. They uh, promote Ganesh. Uh, so all these different deities and entities, I think the, the, the philosophy in that Lord's Prayer is, is constant. And I know that a number of years ago that an individual from Midland, Ontario, went to the Supreme Court of Canada asking that the Lord's Prayer be removed from municipal uh, sessions. I think that's wrong. I don't know why we should have to deal with the minority of people. Uh, you know, who want to have something done when we have over 25 or 26 churches right here in our community. And you know what? I may stir a little, uh, ruffle some feathers, but I don't care. Uh, this has been a tradition within our council for 150 years, and I think it should be here on a constant. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Jackano. Uh, confirming bylaw, Councillor Abdallah. Thank you, Your Worship. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Andrew Plummer that bylaw 10-2020 to confirm the proceedings of the regular meeting of council of May 5th, 2020 be adopted and passed. And further, that said bylaw be signed by the mayor and clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Thank you. Uh, confirming bylaw 10-2020, all those in favor? Carried. Could I have a motion to adjourn, please? Moved by Councillor Plummer, seconded by Councillor Reavy. All those in favor? We are now adjourned. Thank you very much, everyone.